everyone and welcome to this Solutions Plus second course on the electrification of buses and its integration in public transport systems. My name is Aida Abdullah, I am Senior Manager at the Bus Unit of the Knowledge and Innovation Department at UATP and I will be presenting you today this module on either deployment in Europe and I will be mentioning the role of the European Commission uh, Clean Bus Europe Platform project. A brief note on UATP, we are the International Association of Public Transport and we work to enhance quality of life and economic well-being by promoting and advocating public transport and sustainable transport modes in urban areas worldwide. So today we will be going together through these uh, three main points. First of all, a look into the uh, EBUS deployment in Europe. What are the main drivers? What is the current state? What is the policy framework? After that, we will go together through the Clean Bus Europe platform project, uh, which is uh, what I call a very inspiring example on how to promote and, and support uh, Clean Bus deployment. And we will conclude with a short uh, brief note on the Assured Clean Bus report, which is a joint effort of different EU funded fellow initiatives. It's like a short project, the Jive Jive project, and the Clean Bus Europe platform project. So now, to understand this big momentum of clean bus deployment we are witnessing in Europe, we need to underline the role of policy. There is a strong policy framework on decarbonisation and clean technologies, which is driving both the market and cities towards clean and zero emission technologies. Uh, there is different levels of this policy framework. We have at the international level the Paris Agreement, which is the uh, legally binding treaty towards the decarbonisation and low carbon economies. We have at the European level the EU Green Deal, but also directives like the Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Directive and most, important, most importantly the Clean Vehicle Directive, uh, especially for cities and operators. Right, I will be presenting you in the next slide. Also at the national level, at the member state level, we have different examples, but here just to mention one, uh, the uh, Mission Zero Power by Holland, launched by the Dutch government, committing to full electrification of bus fleets by 2025. So when we look at this, uh, at this policy framework, it can look a bit overwhelming, right? It can, can definitely look more a challenge but what I would like to share with you today is this reflection. The introduction of clean technologies and especially of uh, electric buses is rather than a challenge, a big opportunity and this for several reasons. First of all, besides the environmental and societal benefits that uh, electric powertrains offer, uh, for instance, through the reduction of overall greenhouse gas emissions, uh, the improvement of uh, local air quality, but also uh, the improved uh, working conditions for the driver thanks to the smooth driving, the less vibrations, no exhaust fumes, which can be also applied to uh, the passengers because it is a more comfortable ride. Um, it's an opportunity also to rethink and optimize the system, which is bringing us to achieve a better bus service, which in turn is going to uh, help us improve the image of the urban bus as an innovative, modern and environmental friendly transport mode and this as well will be helping us to improve the, attractive, the attractiveness of our cities, right? Finally, it's also an opportunity to improve uh, the competitiveness of the European industry because we are strengthening innovation and we are bringing in uh, different new technologies which are fulfilling the needs of operators and cities and thus we are also supporting a much more prosperous and resilient economy. So let's have a closer look to this uh, policy framework. Um, the work on the Clean Bus Deployment Initiative started back in 2026 when the Commission organized a series of meetings with cities, operators and the industry to understand what were the barriers hindering uh, the introduction of clean buses in Europe. A UATP was part of these discussions and the, from the beginning uh, we have been supporting the Commission's effort to launch this initiative. 
Um, after a series of, uh, of, of meetings, uh, finally in 2017, the Commission launched the uh, CLIMBUS Deployment Initiative uh, with the purpose of accelerating the introduction of clean technologies across European Member States. Uh, cities, operators, the industry and any stakeholder involved in CLIMBUS deployment can express uh, its commit his commitment in uh, the transition uh, to clean bus fleets by signing the clean bus declaration, which is a document which is part of the clean bus deployment initiative. Also, the Commission identified three main elements required for the scale up. Um, first of all, the policy framework, like the one we are discussing today, but more importantly as well, the financial and funding framework necessary to finance the transition and the fleet renewal with uh, clean and zero emission technologies. And finally, uh, the need of exchange of know-how and expertise among cities and operators to increase the overall knowledge level and uh, the, the chances to successful uh, EBUS, in this case, uh, clean and EBUS uh, deployment. Um, to fulfill this purpose, this last uh, purpose, the Commission launched the Clean Bus Europe platform project, which can be understood as the strategic line of action, which is supporting the effective implementation of the targets and, and the goals of the Clean, uh, clean Vehicle Directive, and also the purpose to, uh, to boost, to foster uh, clean bus deployment across European member states. Now a closer look to the uh, Clean Vehicle Directive, which is uh, the most relevant uh, policy supporting the effective introduction of clean and zero emission buses in Europe. So first of all, why? Because it's establishing mandatory targets for public bus procurement. To do so, the Directive has uh, two periods. The first one started as of August last year and it will end in, in, at the end of 2025 and it's establishing at least 45% of clean buses as the target and of it 22.5% of zero emission buses. Now the question is what is clean and what is zero emission? Well for that the directive has defined that a clean bus is fueled by electricity, hydrogen, natural gas, both compressed natural and liquefied natural gas, most biofuels, synthetic and paraffinic fuels, and also liquefied petroleum gas. A zero emission bus, at the tail but not to forget, is a vehicle which is either without an internal combustion engine or with an internal combustion engine, but emitting less than one gram of CO2 per kilometer or kilowatt hour. Once this set, remember these definitions when we look at the second at the second bar establishing the targets for the second period. Uh, from 2026 until the end of 2030, all newly procured buses will need to be uh, sorry, 65% of all newly procured buses will need to be clean, and of it, the half of it, 32.5% will need to be zero emissions. He said, please remember that these specific targets are applicable for the member states you have indicated here in the slide, so like Luxembourg, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, etc., and that lower quotas apply for the remaining member states. So against this background, how have European cities embraced this challenge? So we are seeing that there is a strong will and political leadership for full electrification by 2025 and 2030. And uh, please keep in mind the targets that we have to see for the Green Vehicle Directive when we go through these examples. We said that in the Netherlands, all cities will have to ensure that the fleets are zero emissions by 2025. Just to give you an idea of the dimension of this exercise, please uh, note that uh, today approximately 25% of the Dutch bus fleet is running on batteries. Also, we have in France, since 2020, public transport uh, organizations need to uh, set up a plan which is ensuring the achievement of 50% of clean technologies by 2030. 
also different examples in cities, leading cities. Not all here in this list, of course, but some examples. Amsterdam, we said 2025, full uh, decarbonization of bus fleets. In Paris, we have the uh, the e bus 2025, the, sorry, the bus 2025 project, which is aiming for 80% of battery buses and 20% of CNG buses. Berlin, the Berlin Senate already uh, committed to full uh, decarbonization of fleets by 2030, same as Hamburger Hochbahn, with the addition also since 2020, Hamburger Hochbahn does not purchase any additional diesel bus. So this is the uh, situation when it comes to the strong uh, will uh, and political leadership, but Sometimes we have cases where cities indeed have the political will, but they might lack of capabilities, right, and know-how. Um, for this purpose, it is exactly the creation of the Clean Bus Europe platform I will present you in the next slide. But before we switch, let me just give you very briefly an, an overview of what is the situation in terms of new registrations. In the, in the graphic here, in the pie chart, you can see the registrations of a new uh, city buses, electric buses, uh, in the period 2012 and 20, uh, 2021. You can see that the top five, with accumulation of over 8,000 city bus new registrations, are the Netherlands, uh, the, um, Germany, uh, United Kingdom, France and Sweden. And just to have an idea what happened last year in terms of new uh, city bus registrations, the top five were Germany, uh, UK, France, Denmark and Poland. I think not surprising, but interesting in any case. And now this promising picture shall be extended across European cities. And for this purpose, I'm going to present you briefly the Clean Bus Europe platform project. This project is bringing together all players in the field of clean bus deployment. Uh, we have cities, we have authorities, we have operators, we have the industry, funding and financing sector, but also associations and UATP bodies and committees working towards uh, clean bus technologies. We have said many, many times in the past that the successful electrification of, of, of bus fleets and any fleet actually requires uh, to build uh, strong partnerships and develop cooperation among all sectors, right? This is exactly what the Clean Bus Europe platform is about, with the purpose of exchanging knowledge and expertise among less experienced cities, like you can see here in the in the in the graph on the right side in the map. You see we have target cities, we have host cities and follower cities. The target cities are those less experienced. The whole cities are the one. Uh, very experienced with clean bus technologies, follower cities and cities um, supporting and following the project by learning also actively. So this knowledge exchange and expertise happens directly between target cities and host cities. We have developed a twin approach and also we provide in the project technical support and there is logically also supported by uh, the industry and the financing um, sector, a match uh, between supply and demand to understand what are the uh, industry applications available in the market and at the same time, what are the needs on the other side by cities and operators. And the same is analogous to the uh, finance and funding uh, um, actors. A uh, short reminder on the technologies, uh, we, uh, we are developing uh, knowledge in the project around these technologies here. So battery electric, plug-in hybrid, natural gas, fuel cells and in-motion charging trolley bus. Very shortly, these are the four uh, work pillars, as we said, capacity building and knowledge transfer, also technical support. Uh, provided by a, a, a network of local experts. Also, we develop some activities uh, dedicated to understand what are the impacts of the transition to uh, clean technologies, to clean buses on the workforce. And finally, we have some monitoring activities I will present you in a second. 
In terms of concrete services, activities and products, we develop webinars on any topic related to clean bus deployment and the technologies I just mentioned. We also have the organization of study tours hosted by, by the host city, where the learning cities, the target cities, can visit and learn on site. Uh, also, we organize marketplaces with industry and financing actors supporting the platform. As I said, we provide technical support through a local uh, expert network, activities on social dialogue, and then also market evolution. We monitor the market evolution and we produce uh, different publications and materials to support learning cities. This is one section of the website that I believe is very, can be quite interesting for you. It's the Clean Bus Toolkit section and it has two different sections. First is the market monitoring section where you will find, uh, as I said, uh, data on, uh, on the state of the, uh, of the uh, uh, European uh, clean bus market in terms of tenders, orders and uh, buses in service. Uh, this is regularly updated uh, thanks to our cooperation with the Sustainable Bus Magazine. And also we have uh, the library section, which is, as, it, uh, as the name is already indicating, it's a place to find different materials on uh, clean bus deployment on the topic. Also, you will find interactive tools for planning, but also whenever activity, um, whatever activity we have developed in the project will be also um, found there, like the webinars, or uh, the, uh, the, the results of the study tours or the marketplaces. Finally, I would like to present to you very briefly the Assured Clean Bus Report. As I said before, it's a cooperation of three EU fellow initiatives, the Assured Project, the Clean Bus Europe Project, project and the Jive and Jive 2 Project. And it's bringing together over 125 cities, and manufacturers and system suppliers uh, with the purpose of providing you an overview of the state of uh, clean bus deployment in Europe. I will conclude by inviting you to uh, access this publication. You can download it if you follow here this link. And this is just an example of the kind of information you will find. There is a collection of city fact sheets providing you some key parameters and uh, yeah, the current state of the fleet of the cities participating. Also, you have some, uh, some uh, bus manufacturers and system supplier providers featured. So I can just invite you to have a look here and uh, yeah, just get in touch back to me if you have any additional questions. And with this, I conclude my presentation and I wish you a very successful continuation of the course. Thank you very much.